midnight each day. On Valentine's night. Time as you know it freezes. 20 minutes past 10. Keep up, Doctor. Thinks we're going to smother her in her sleep. I'm a grave digger, Doc. David Hunt. I can change. I split the brawl up. I did nothing. I'm not stealing any more. I'm actually a classically trained pallbearer. There are a lot of health and safety considerations. Not everybody can do it. Well, properly at least. Occasionally I step in if the funeral director is short-shouldered. I do remember her face. She wasn't upset in the usual way. She seemed agitated. Her husband must have been a giant. The coffin was so heavy. I remember because aft port side sprained his ankle. That and he wasn't lifting correctly. Nobody gave me the memo that Claire was telling everybody about our arrangement. Sometimes a few slip out the back for student use too. These things happen in all cemeteries. It's best not to broadcast it. common or garden rocks. It's actually quite handy sometimes having an archaeological dig going on next door, although I'd rather there wasn't. Jessica is a beautiful woman. I've not spied on her since the incident we talked about. I have real feelings for her, Doctor. I just... we've never connected. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. It's nice you think I'm capable of such basic interaction with females. But I'm still in awe of her, really. I will think about it, though. I find using nautical terms to describe the position of pallbearers fitting. Plus, most of them are three sheets to the wind. You know. I put my hand through a rusty nail at work today. It hurt like hell and bled like I'd been shot. I closed my eyes and thought, this isn't happening. The nail is just a worm and it will wriggle through me. When I looked back, can you guess what I saw? When I looked back at my hand, it was healed. Look, see? My hand had healed. The nail had become a worm and was wriggling in my palm. It was like a little miracle, like magic. I shouldn't really say miracle or magic. They're words that Dr. Decker used when he tried to get you to think things and make them real. But do you think it's real, Doctor, that magic is real? And so it isn't. I envy you, Doctor. I wish I could be so sure. I never spied on you at midnight, but if you start acting strangely, 
Maybe I will. I'm fine. I'm ready for my grief counselling. I emailed you Mariana's address. I don't know why you'd want it. I suppose you're going to start doing home visits now, like Dr. Decker? Doctor, if you don't want it, don't text me and ask for it. It's all right. I don't mind doing menial tasks for you. Someone has to do them. Yes, Dr. Decker started doing home visits for Mariana. He said she couldn't concentrate properly in his office. I hope you're not thinking of doing the same thing. I need you right where I can see you. Some mornings I come into work and still expect him to be here. Sometimes it feels like he actually is here, watching over me. We had a connection. It's gone now, though. You can't have a connection with the dead, can you? Not for too long, anyway. Dr. Decker asked me to have dinner with him for Valentine's. I refused, obviously, because you don't sleep where you eat or something like that. But it was flattering, especially with competition like Mariana around. I was at home on my lonesome doctor, like I said before. Checks and balances, doctor. Somebody needs to be watching the watchman, so to speak. Make sure you're helping, not hindering. He probably did his fair share of helping and hindering. He was definitely helping in the beginning, but then seemed to lose sight of things. I think he was so overwhelmed by the patients he was getting. His curiosity just got the better of him. There was a definite turning point. Somewhere around the time Professor Alderby turned up, that seemed to unsettle him. And then we had a flood of extra weird patients. I think it was all too much for him. I think I misjudged him. I hope you deal with it better. Grief is such a strange word if you keep saying it. Grief, grief, grief. It sounds like somebody's being whipped. And you're going to ask me how I feel today? I think that's all settled now. We are agreeing to pay Ben £5,000 and he's agreeing not to say anything about what he saw. He thought he saw... A creature coming out of Dr. Decker's mouth. Well, at least that's the reason he's given for not emptying the bins that night. Either way, it's not the kind of publicity that we need. Shiny, happy, sane people. It's in that police report that I gave to you. You should really take a look at it. Sorry, I didn't mean I was competing. I was happy Mariana was going out with him. I didn't want to be romantic with him. We had a stronger connection than that. Dr. Decker and I shared some philosophy. We'd both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind and we agreed with a lot of what it said. Have you read that book, Doctor? In Cult of the Kinetic Mind, the author suggests that everyone is capable of psychokinesis and that the cult leaders specifically had these powers that turned their followers into disciples. It's not a fun read, but if you're into psychology, it's a blast. Psychokinesis is the ability to change the physical world without actually touching it, just by using your mind. It's not just about bending spoons. It covers all sorts of things like telepathy, telekinesis, telesabalas. Shoot me, I'm a Kojak fan. <laughs> no, not at all in my experience. Dr. Decker had an unusual number of patients who claimed psychokinesis. Either he'd been specifically looking for them or someone had been sending them. Like I said, 
all those cool things are in Cult of the Kinetic Mind, apart from Kojak, obviously. If you ever get a patient who thinks they can change the world with just their mind, then duck, just in case they can. But seriously, do a whole load of shrinking and make them better. Whether you believe in psychokinesis or not, you'll need to figure out your approach with those that do. How do you make people who think they have special powers better? Do you remain passive and support, encourage them, take them away? Things could escalate. Building trust is one thing, but at what cost? It's entirely possible that someone is targeting this practice with psychokinetic patients. To what end, I don't know. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are diagnosed as insane, or at least temporarily insane. It's a handy diagnosis if you're facing criminal prosecution, especially if it's for murder. Honestly, I think Dr. Decker had a bit of a crush on Mariana, or vice versa. I'm not really sure. There's some footage from their home sessions if you want to see them. Yes, perhaps best to leave that alone. Oops, that was a strange thing to say, wasn't it? Whipped. Am I all whips and chains in the bedroom or dominant in the boardroom? Don't answer that, it's not a question. It's early days for a harassment suit yet, what with Ben's nervous shock already. Dr. Decker did send me to see his mother once. She was dying in a nursing home and he didn't want to see her. I remember him calling her a manipulative evil old hag. You tend not to ask any more questions after that. I didn't really speak to Nathan that much at all, but I have this strange feeling that I know him really well. I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm a bit of a bookworm. I'm one of those annoying, constantly self-improving, overachieving types. Takes one to know one, a eh, doctor? Uh, Professor Warwick, I'm a physicist. Where's Dr. Decker? Is he really? Actually, dead? Hmm? Not a worthy adversary after all, then. Dr. Decker challenged me. He tried to use my theories against me. Quantum theories. Do you really want to know? Decker's eyes used to glaze over whenever we talked about that. He uh, didn't believe in quantum physics. As if it's something that you can optionally believe in. Well, it started with an experiment. Have you heard of quantum suicide, Doctor? Uh, well, then I'll be brief. According to the laws of quantum suicide, if I were to shoot myself now, then one branch of my timeline would result in my death, whilst the other in my continued existence. I simply applied that logic to something different. Gambling. I set up an experiment whereby I would visit a casino and place a very large bet at a roulette table. Now, I would always bet on odd. Now, the results of this particular experiment were mundane. I won as many times as you would expect according to the laws of probability, but then I changed a parameter. Quantum suicide required a loss of life to make it a realistic thought experiment. So I simply upped the stakes. 
Every time I bet on odd, I would uh, place everything I had on that one spin of the wheel, and it worked well, for a while. Dr. Decker killed it, and I can't get it back. Well, my theory, quantum gambling. If the stakes are high enough, you will win every time by simply shifting your consciousness into that branch that wins. It's tricky, but it can be done. <laughs> Dr. Decker didn't like that. He saw me becoming rich and powerful, and he hated that. That's why he proffered the hangman's paradox. Well, uh, imagine a judge sentences you to death. Now, it will be Monday or Tuesday next week, but it will be a surprise. Well, which day do you think? You'll be executed. Well, Monday does seem likely, yes. Because if you're still alive on Monday at midnight, then Tuesday won't be a surprise. But if you're sure that it's Monday, then that won't be a surprise either, will it? Decker tricked me. Now, he told me that sometime in the future, I would lose a bet, that, that, that I would lose all of my money. Now this didn't seem likely because I had quantum gambling on my side and it was working. But he unnerved me. He, uh, he made me doubt myself. And then it happened. Recently I lost everything that I'd managed to build up since Vanessa left me. Honestly? Well, I think he feared quantum physics. He didn't like things being explained in terms of science, almost as if he'd have preferred chaos. Why not gambling? My wife Vanessa left me for a neurosurgeon. She emptied our entire combined wealth into her barrister's wallet. I needed more money. Physics provided me with a solution. We were married for 14 years, seven months, and three days. <laughs> Vanessa couldn't have children, at least that's what she told me. She grounded me in reality. I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's probably what I needed. But part of me always thought that one day I'd achieve immortality through science and we'd be It wasn't to be, though. Well, yes, it bothered me, especially now that I find out that she's pregnant. Oh, no, it wasn't a rocket scientist that was required, but a brain surgeon, it seems. I have considered putting that neurosurgeon onto his darkest timeline, but I'm not a killer, it would seem. I was at a fundraiser for a charity called Mind Stretch Outreach. Don't know how I got roped into that, I can't remember. But it was full of uh, very clever children with bizarre outlooks on life. And Jaya. It was Jaya who asked me to go. Oh, she's Dr. Decker's lovely assistant. I, I imagine she's your lovely assistant now. Yeah, she always uh, smiles and makes me a cup of tea before a session. <laughs> that smile. Uh, which reminds me, um, my session. Can we talk about my problem now? I, I'm not a gambler, Doctor. I'm a scientist. I need more money. It's true, I've run out of money for my research. An opportunity has arisen. A, a very wealthy group of individuals um, have offered to pay me a very large sum of money if, if I attend their next private soiree. And they, they don't want to talk or anything like that. They, um, they want a practical demonstration. It is full of poor kids with uh, very capable minds. I, I did give them a talk on quantum tunneling once, and uh, they loved it. Not sure it'll put dinner on the table for any of them, though. They'll pay me one million pounds 
if I can successfully survive six rounds of Russian roulette. Now, I am worried because of what Dr. Decker said, but, uh, well, I can't help but thinking that uh, the stakes are so high I can't possibly lose. What do you think, Doctor? Should I take them up on their offer? No. No, I suppose you're right. In a darker timeline, you probably said yes, and I'm dead now. I earn good money where I work. How do I stop losing it? <laughs> I take your point, I take your point. But I suppose to uh, decide whether to continue gambling or to stop gambling is a gamble within itself, isn't it? Well, my time is up. Um, will we be having another session or... No, no, don't answer that. It'll turn you into a gambler like me. Infectious. Isn't it? I've told you all I know about Dr. Decker. He started out good, then turned a bit crazy towards the end. When you start giving people more problems as a therapist, that's a bit crazy. I started out with depression. Now I seem to repeat days. Even if you don't believe the repeat days, then I clearly have extra mental health problems that he's given me. I burned the photos of Hannah. It didn't work. I suppose because the loss was superficial. The next thing I burned was the rocking chair. That worked. I've been getting rid of her stuff ever since. There was a day when I attacked a Salvation Army bin, but I gave in. I think they possibly cursed other people, a bit like he cursed me. Sometimes you could see he was bursting to tell me about it, but he couldn't. He was ecstatic with power. Ah, oh, the curse. Well, I remembered. I was hoping he'd forget. It's gonna sound crazy. Dr. Decker said I would never be able to move forward until I came to terms with my grief. And so from this point on, I start to relive the same day over and over again until I made something of it. I believed him. I didn't want to believe him. I remember I said, you can't just say things and they happen. He laughed and laughed. I think he was going mad. He said he'd give me a demonstration. He held his hand outstretched and told me to look at the flame. There was no flame, and then there was. He was holding a flame in his hand that had come out of nowhere. And he tried to hypnotize me to make me forget it. I didn't forget seeing the flame. He wanted me to forget it, to forget it all, but I didn't. For whatever reason, he couldn't undo what he'd done. I was scared. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. I was scared what Dr. Decker would do to me if he found out I still knew. So I had to play along, keep coming to the sessions, pretend I hadn't seen what he'd done. It was awful because I was suffering through the same days over and over again, but I couldn't talk to him about it because he'd know. I accidentally put Hannah's diary into a Salvation Army donation bin. They're like huge post boxes with a circular tray that makes sure things spill to the bottom. I tried to get in to get it back, but I gave up. I read the last few weeks of Hannah's diary a while ago. I must have accidentally dropped in some clothes for the Salvation Army bin. It's funny, because I wasn't going to read it. She said she'd fallen out of love with me. That she was going to break off the engagement. That she didn't love me anymore. I regretted it. He'd become bored of me, so I got much of my insight from calls or messages he'd take during our sessions. I think because he hypnotised me, he didn't want to play with me anymore, so I got basic therapist. He told me lots of people get depression, to become more active, to see more people. And although he wouldn't always be there to listen, Jaya would be. 
Yeah, I talked to her quite a lot. I'm not sure how many days of that she'd remember. She seemed to care, which is more I can say for Decker. I regretted that I mourned for Hannah so long. I regret the grief. I regret all the days I slept through because of it. Had I known she didn't love me anymore, things would have been different. I, I'm a bit angry now. If I had that day over again, I'd, I may just still pull out in front of the driver. I didn't notice Dr. Decker had a paper spike. I haven't really seen more than a foot in front of me since Hannah died. Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? And thanks for the dating advice, by the way. I signed up for a dating website. It's a bit easy, to be honest. If I message something they don't like, I change it on the day we plays. It's not very honest. If I'm being honest, I'd probably rather ask out one of the patients I've seen here. The, the friendly redhead with the accent. I didn't kill Dr. Decker. I wanted to be as far away from him as possible. I don't know who did. A few weeks ago, it's still sinking in. I suppose living a lie is just the norm nowadays. I'm okay. Thanks for asking. It's rent day and I always feel a little blue on rent day. Rent day is the day I pay rent to my landlady. Dr. Decker used to put my checks on that thing. I guess someone thought they weren't getting value for money. You've got a good memory, Doctor. Let's talk dreams. Sometimes I'll dream about a light. Deep in the ocean somewhere. I head towards it because it's warm and glowing like a beacon. And when I'm at the bottom, it's the most beautiful thing. Like, like a welcoming sun. Like I'm home. And then I wake up. It's so beautiful, it calls me. It's like I'm in a trance. What does the dream mean, doctor? You think I'm lying? Wow, that's gonna help with our trust issues. I've had no blackouts, and I haven't been to the beach since our last session. But I think I will today. Do you want to come with me to the beach? Doctor, I think you're getting a little anxious. If you ever wanted to visit the beach, you can just turn up, it's not mine. I actually don't have a lot of money. Sometimes a therapy check would bounce, but Dr. Decker would be okay with it. Oh, my checks are fine though, don't worry. I'm not broke. Men buy me drinks at bars though. Sometimes I'll get away with not paying at restaurants. Isn't that how it is for everybody? I mainly like drive throughs 
I don't like crowds and I find it difficult to stay in the same place for too long. I guess I'm a fidget. Crowds at nightclubs and bars are different. The lights are dim. You can slink around without attracting too much attention. Sometimes I'll kiss a guy in a club and then he just follows me. Wherever I go, it's creepy. I don't want everyone seeing that. They follow me wherever I go. Anywhere, where do you think they follow me, doctor? It depends where they follow me. If they follow me home, they bang on the door for an hour or so, then leave. Other places, they just disappear. I don't see them again. Well, they don't just disappear into thin air. I think they return to the place I found them. But I've not run into the same person twice. Still talking about him? And I thought you were just interested in me, Doctor. Dr. Decker suggested home visits. I think he was probably checking up on his investment. You're not thinking of doing home visits, are you, Doctor? That's good. I'm not sure I can afford any more of your time. Yes, they follow me home. They're silent. It's like a trance. There was one guy, a real gym buddy. I let him into the bedroom, but nothing. Nothing I did would stop him just staring at me. It was creepy. I uh, got him to follow me outside, and then I just shut the door. It's just good manners to accept when someone offers to buy you a drink. I'm a very good-natured girl. Don't you think I'm sweet, Doctor? I think you're falling for me, Doctor. Don't let that get in the way of helping me. I don't talk to them, they don't talk to me. It's true then. I'd heard Dr. Decker was stabbed, but I didn't know for sure. It's weird that whoever did it would choose the paper spike. Dr. Decker used to play with it in our sessions sometimes. You know, pick it up, handle it while we talked. I remember once, he pushed the spike through his skin. Yet this bit here between his thumb and his finger, he said he didn't think I'd mind the sight of blood being a nurse and all that, but actually there wasn't any. A bit freaked out. At first, I thought it was a trick. A magic trick, you know? Like some kind of therapeutic test. Show the patient this retractable spike and see how they react. 
but it wasn't. The spike was real. Dr. Decker gave me the paper spike to try. It wasn't fake. <laughs> it was pretty sharp, actually. I don't know how he did it. He said he just thought that it wouldn't hurt him, so it didn't. I'm okay, I suppose. Works fine. Hilda's fading fast. Terry's Terry. I feel a bit sad, to be honest. I gave all my keepsakes back. Well, I thought about it. And well, I know you said it was okay that I should keep them, but maybe it did look a bit suspicious, me having things that have belonged to patients who've died in my care. I don't want people to get the wrong idea about me. The locket, the watch, the ring, even the little bird Sarah Decker gave me. I wasn't supposed to mention her. Dr. Decker's mother. She was one of my first patients, but she died a while ago. Terry seems to have backed down since I gave the keepsakes back. Actually, it doesn't seem like she's been very well. Not her usual self. Maybe she's got a bug or something. I know it's silly, but those things meant a lot to me. They were reminders that I'd helped those people. Hilda's nearing the end. She's been sleeping a lot, not eating much. She hasn't been that argumentative either. Although, she did give me a vicious scratch yesterday. It was nothing. I was just trying to give her meds. It's hard, you know? I'm trying to help her, but she keeps fighting me. It'll be better after she's seen her daughter. I've decided I'm going to do it tonight. She hasn't got much time left. You know the answer to that, Doctor. What have we been talking about? What can I do for Hilda that will make it all better? That's the plan. I know, it sounds unbelievable, like I'm making it up. I wish I could prove it to you somehow. Um, we could try shifting now. Uh, think of someone you really love. It might help if you close your eyes. Are you thinking of them? Can you picture them? Okay, hold on. <sighs> Sorry, I don't think it's gonna work. On the bright side, that probably means you're not gonna die anytime soon. It's tricky. I mean, I'll sound exactly like Hilda's daughter, but I try and keep it vague because I don't become her. I don't know what she would really say. I, I say things like, it's okay, don't be scared, I love you mum, or I love you dad. But it doesn't really matter what their relationship's like because it's not really them. I always do the Disney version, the best, most loving version. That's what my patients want to hear. And maybe deep down they know it's not the truth, but it's got to be better than the reality. Does it really matter if it isn't the truth? Isn't it worth it if it brings them peace? Tell me honestly, doctor. Do you really think that what I'm doing is wrong? So you're saying I should let Hilda die without seeing her daughter one last time? I don't know if I could do that, Doctor. I'd be letting her down. 
I'd have to think about it. It just makes things complicated, doesn't it? I knew Dr. Decker's mother before I started seeing Dr. Decker. She's dead, and now he's dead. I'm sure you're gonna have a field day with it. Yeah, that's the reason I came to see him. I knew she was dying, but he refused to talk to me unless I booked a session, so I did. And well, here we are. I told Dr. Decker that his mum was dying, that he should see her before it's too late, but he wasn't interested. It wasn't like he hated her. It was just like, it wasn't important. He asked me to take care of it for him. He did send his assistant along to see her once. Sorry, your assistant. It was about the second, third session we had. He said he could tell that I was a good person, that I wanted to help people, and that I should think really hard about how I could do that. That's how I discovered shifting. All Dr. Decker did was encourage me to think. But the shifting, that's all me. And my mum's a psychic, and my sister's an empath, but I was just ordinary. I always felt like I wasn't special, like I was missing out. But I wasn't. I just hadn't discovered what I could do yet. Sarah Decker was one of the first ones I tried shifting for. I didn't really know what I was doing that first time. I mean, I didn't actually expect anything to happen. I just thought, what would really help this woman? I thought maybe she would just imagine that he was there. But it actually happened. I changed into him, Dr. Decker. It blew my mind. To tell you the truth, I don't really know what an empath is. I should probably Google it sometime. My mum's got these spirit guides and they tell her things. Mostly about my love life, it would seem. As far as I know, it only works on people who are close to death. That's the whole point of it. I have to hold their hand and they have to think of the person and they have to be near death. And those seem to be the three criteria. I don't know, sorry. You can stop looking at me like that. You've made me do this. And don't try and escape, you're all tied up. Now tell me the truth. Is this a dream? That's a good doctor. Yes, it's all a big dream. So let's get down to business. Do you believe that people can have kinetic powers? I think you like it when I hurt you, Doctor. That's a worrying sign. People obviously have kinetic powers. That's how I'm here, testing you. Now, 
How do we treat people with kinetic powers? Do we encourage them or do we discourage them? Very good, doctor. That's the right answer. Remember it or there will be consequences. Now, since I'm here, let's have a little bit of fun. Shall we, doctor? Nothing, of course. The faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? Him, God, the great old one, the elder God, Cthulhu, however you address him. Listen to me, you're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman evolve. What was once chaotic becomes well, more ordered. Without chaos, he has less power. When there's too much order, he becomes impotent. So he needs to instill chaos again. And do you know how he does this? No, and yes, but you're being too granular. He needs chaos so he can return, and the only thing stopping him is you. Not just you, uh, you and people like you, psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, anyone who is caring for people who are losing their sanity. You have no comprehension how important your job is, do you? He doesn't need your version of insanity to spread. He needs chaos. It's not the same. It's just a means to an end. They're not all cultists, unfortunately. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself, to cause further insanity and harm your own. I doubt it. But can I make you question your reality? Definitely. But in doing so, I would be promoting more chaos. On the basis, the central component of our universe is Chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. As, by definition, chaos is unpredictable from one moment to the next. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter our perception of the world, no matter how much chaos that would cause. In 10 seconds time, there will be no gravity in this room and we will float. Three, two, one. You think nothing happened. Where's your glass, Doctor? Someone else in my hour. I brought David back to life. I removed the chains, dressed her. It was Iris. We could try shifting now. Would you like to see David, Doctor? <sighs> Sorry. We both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind, and that broke. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are grateful if you could see your way to declaring me insane, or at least temporarily insane. There was no flame. And then there was. I'll kiss a guy. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. And then he just follows me. Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? Wherever I go. We may just still pull out in front of the driver. Morning, Doctor. You're looking a bit unwell. Are they getting you all wound up? Well, have a look at this. I found it in Dropbox. Apparently, Dr. Decker lent Mariana some money. 
Sounds dodgy, doesn't it? I also got the toxicology report back from Officer Yates and shocker, Dr. Decker had, sorry, you just have to read it. I should have spoiler alert tattooed on my forehead. And can we not do the grief counseling thing today? I'm all sorts of behind on work and I'm getting more stressed out watching it all pile up. If you need anything though, I'm here.